Hi and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to look at uh, monitoring a, a broker or series of brokers using the uh, SIS topic. Now this is the most common form I would say of, of monitoring brokers using the SIS topic but you need to remember that not all brokers will be publishing on the SIS topic so you need to make sure that uh, the brokers you're monitoring are published on the SIS topic or otherwise this won't work. Uh, in previous videos we looked at using the ping, the network ping command and we also looked at um, sending messages through the broker to monitor it and measuring the actual delay. So in this video we look at the SIS topic, I say the most common form of broker monitoring and you can monitor various parameters of the of the broker. Now this is actually what it looks like, this is the the flow what we've got and I'm monitoring here the test.mosquito.org broker and you can see the various things here uh, connected clients, messages received. Now, these are the ones that I've configured. Now, you can modify the flow as you want, so the flow will be available. Um, and this table below lists all the topics that this broker is publishing on, uh, all the SIS topics that this bro broker is publishing on. And I've included it here because it's actually very useful when you're configuring your dashboard here. So if you don't know what what the broker is publishing or what you can actually monitor then you can use this table here now if you don't want to use the table and you just want the dashboard which you would you would do in the in the final version of the flow then you just disable the the table and you can do that here because it's that template there that's that's doing it so you just disable that and it should disable that um, table um, if that doesn't work you just delete it, uh, you don't need it. But say so it's very useful when you're setting up the dashboard when you're deciding what you need to monitor, what you want to monitor. Now we're purely displaying the data here, we're not actually doing anything with it. Um, you could configure alerts on the data, you could uh, um, set thresholds on the data and do all kinds of things uh, like that but say we're not doing it here, all we're doing is displaying the data. So let me just take you through the, the flow quickly. So here we've got the incoming MQTT messages and you can see here I'm subscribing to the test.mosquito.org broker. Now you can change this to whatever broker you want. This top of the flow here is the one that does the table so you just disable this and you delete the template or disable the template here and you won't be displaying the the table and as I say I would do that in the final version but while you're configuring and deciding what you want to monitor then leave the table there now this style sheet here is the thing that makes the the rounded buttons on the table and all kinds of things now I don't take credit for this. I found most of this code on a Node-RED forum, uh, the Discourse forum, and I borrowed the code from there and just added to it. So uh, if someone does recognize the code as theirs and they want credit for it, then please let me know and I'll, I'll list them as uh, in the description of the video. But I say, this is not my work. This is this came from a, a Node-RED forum. But I do like it and I do include it on my, a lot of my flows because it does actually make for a, a better looking dashboard. Okay and this is the bit that displays the data in the various uh, buttons on, on, the, on the dashboard and all we're doing here is we, you can switch node and we're just selecting the, the topic you can see here and then we're sending it out to get displayed displaying the uptime and these are text widgets on the on the dashboard so very very basic to say we're not doing anything else with the data okay and now I'm just going to disable this um, this flow and I'm going to enable the multi broker flow and if we look back at the ah, 
I have to deploy it first. So this is what it looks like now. Now the idea of this is be able to monitor a selected broker. So you select the broker you want to monitor and it will display the various parameters um, here down in the dashboard. And again I've uh, I haven't got the table in this one, I've got a chart in this one, um, but I say you can replace it with the table. Okay, so here we selected through a drop down box, and I've got various brokers configured, and this is, these are all coded into the drop down box at the moment. And you could actually use an MQTT input node to monitor the various brokers but the problem with this is it if you had if you want to add to the broker you had to have another node and it does get a little messy when you have lots of brokers so depending on many, how many brokers you you're going to monitor if you're going to broker monitor one or two then I would actually use multiple um, MQTT in nodes but if you're going to monitor lots of brokers then you need another method. Now the method I've used and I've used actually in, in a few um, flows and scripts that I, I've created is to actually use a Python script and the Python script this is the Python script here and all we've, I've got here is a list of brokers so if I want to add another broker to be monitored I add another broker to this list I would also add to add it to the drop down box so I could select it. Now what this Python script does is it actually monitors all these brokers and it publishes the data from all of these brokers on a single topic. And then all I do is subscribe to that topic, you can see it here. I'm subscribing to the sys topics here. And it publishes it and it publishes it with the broker name as a prefix so I can actually pick out the broker name when I actually read the read the imp incoming topic otherwise it's very much the same as the the other one you can see here the the switch node is used to actually select what you're actually displaying so let me show you this running so I've got a little dashboard here where I can start the script so I start the Python script running you can see here and it comes up with the process ID now I use this process ID to stop the script so if you look in the code here it's at the bottom here it's using the exact node to start the script it makes a note of the processor ID and then I just use that processor ID it stores it and I use that processor ID to kill the script you can see there's the kill thing there again I've used this previously in other examples Um, before I continue, I just want to point out this is actually a prototype script, it's a demo script. Um, some of the things don't work 100% um, and I'll show you a few of those things that I've noticed. Um, it's really uh, looking for feedback, so if there's enough interest in the script, if, if enough people find it use, useful, then I would develop it further, otherwise uh, I won't. Um, no, obviously it's uh, free to download, so if you want to carry on and, and develop it further, then that's that's up to you okay so let's show you it running um, so we just start the script here and you see the processor ID there and we just select our broker here I'm going to select my local broker and you can see it comes up now certain things um, don't display correctly this is here message drop this broker is and publishing messages drop so you won't see anything here and other things uh, rely on retained messages so things won't be published uh, except when the broker starts up and so you won't actually see the um, the actual data unless the actual data is republished uh, and I that's I guess is why we're missing the version number here uh, of this broker and if I go on to another broker we go on to the test and you can see here that it is publishing messages dropped and there's quite a few messages dropped now if I just switch back to another broker here 
you can see this is a local broker and it certainly hasn't dropped these messages um, this broker again isn't publishing messages dropped and so the messages dropped is actually still kept from the, the one before so still quite a bit of work to do on the on this uh, flow and I say if there's enough interest in the flow then I will continue developing it otherwise I will leave it okay um, so let me know give me feedback uh, on, on this flow if you're interested in seeing it further developed then let, let me know and I'll, I'll carry on uh, developing it otherwise as I say I'll just I'll just leave it okay that brings me to the end of the video um, if you've got any comments then leave them below if you if you like the video then click on the like button below and if you want to get notified of new videos then subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell until next time goodbye